It's been long overdue, but considering I use this face so much in showing ideal spatial proportions, it's worth giving Australian male model Jordan Barrett his own episode. Jordan comes from the humble coastal town of Byron Bay, Australia. If you've never been to Byron, this place is quite literally what the rest of the world thinks all of Australia is like. Beach blonde surfers, pristine beaches and lavish beach houses. I won't lie in saying that a lot of Australia is actually like this, but the people of Byron are especially laid back. Plus you can catch Chris Hemsworth and a number of famous celebrities running about. Apart from the obvious tourism ad, this background context is important in explaining part of Jordan's appeal, especially internationally as a free-spirited icon. Firstly, let's break down his aesthetic appeal. While his face is handsome and proportionate, it's also very androgynous which gives him the pretty boy look that matches so well with his personality. What I mean by this is that his face looks very similar to a number of masculine female models, the closest of which I can think of is Kelly Middendorf. Normally I would compare a male face to another male, but for this video Kelly is a better analogue to show what each other lacks that makes their faces subtly different. Jordan's jaw inclination is a lot shallower while Kelly's is more obtuse. Jordan's jaw has a feminine shape, whereas Kelly's has a masculine one. In fact, all of Kelly's face is tall but wide throughout, being rectangular and masculine. Being a woman, this is uncommon and is what gives her a unique appearance, much like Karina Kapoor or Angelina Jolie, who are also celebrated as beauty standards despite having a masculine squared off face shape. Jordan, on the other hand, also has a wide proportionate jaw, but its shape and appearance are feminine by Mummer 2016 study on male jaws. Part of this is due to how short and compact his face is, which is actually a feminine dimorphic trait. For instance, the gonial angle or the jaw angle is around 140 degrees, which is on the feminine end and beyond the ideal 130 proposed by the study. Although, this ideal jaw as found in the paper is a more feminine angle, because as it turns out, women prefer more feminine pretty boy jaws over strong drill sergeant jaws of less than 130 degrees. This is a big generalization, obviously, but there is truth to people preferring the most average bell curve gonial angle of 130 rather than 90 or 150, which are on either ends of the masculine feminine spectrum and don't always reflect a coinophilic face. All of this was covered in the Defining Beauty episode on jaws, so visit that for more context. For posterity, Karina Kapoor's jaw is virtually 90 degrees, which is very masculine, and Kelly's is roughly 130 degrees, which is still below the quote-unquote feminine ideal of 135 for women. There is also an article write-up on the female jaw aesthetic at the Coos site. Before we move on, because it is a very big part of his appeal, I should also mention the jaw width or the bigonial width is basically one-to-one -one with his facial width or the bizygomatic width. Mermert's paper suggested that the jaw width should be 90% of the facial width and if you've been following the channel for a while now, virtually every attractive face passes this criteria, male or female. Having a wide jaw is necessary for producing a hollow cheek look, and no amount of leanness can emphasize the OG curve, which is the line here from the cheek to the mouth, if there isn't something beneath it to provide visual contrast. I've also covered this concept in detail using Bella Hadid as an example in episode 1 of Analyzing Celebrity Faces so visit that too after. The last point that I want to make about his lower third is that many might miss just how wide his neck is. Browsing TikTok, as 1 in 3 people do nowadays, I've come across a man with a similar bone structure, but his neck is a lot skinnier, which makes the head look like it's floating. In Jordan's case, it's the same width as his face, even though he's stated that he doesn't like to work out and is very lean anyway, so he's genetically gifted in that regard. Anyone can widen their neck through muscle hypertrophy, but it would benefit men the most having the wider faces of the two in balancing out their proportions. Jordan is basically the gold standard for facial width to height ratio. This is a concept that's talked about on the channel all the time and is studied extensively in scientific literature as it has a strong influence in how we perceive people initially. Research shows that faces with wider, more vertically compact mid-faces 
seen as more masculine and dominant, whereas the opposite holds true in taller, narrower faces. Part of this is due to wider mid faces, typically stretching the eye canthus out further to create intimidating, deep set eyes. A good counter to that argument might be former basketballer Marco Jarek, but if you look closely, his eyes are still wide with appropriate exposure, but only appear beady because their interpupillary distances are small. In other words, they appear too close together. This is a more niche problem to have, with most people having appropriate spatial proportion anyway. Jordan's eyes are also hooded, which is great for making them appear even narrower and more masculine. They also have a slight positive canthal tilt, which means that the eye opening itself slants downwards. Narrower eyes have less rotational symmetry, so anything more than 5 degrees of tilt would just look odd and exaggerated. Unsurprisingly, Keating 1985 found that men with smaller, masculinized eyes are perceived as more mature or socially dominant. What I'd like to point out in this candid shot of him are some of the cosmetic flaws that even a top tier male model has in reality that are hidden in a pose shot like this. Lighting does matter and in this photo, his cheeks aren't nearly as defined or hollow, his skin tone has erythmia at parts, and there are small skin blemishes and age lines forming, especially near his paranasal and mouth. Also, the harsh lighting exposes some of his submental from the front, which is obviously not something you would ever be able to see in a pose shot when he's ready for a shoot. Jordan does smoke, drink and live on a few hours of sleep, oftentimes from his interviews and social media, so it's dubious to see how well his skin will age at the very least, especially being very pale and focused heavily on tanning as part of his modeling look. As explained in the last video, sun damage with the amount of hours that Jordan gets if you follow his social media, has very adverse effects on skin aging, especially those with less melanin. Dr. Sony Sherpa has written an article on choosing sunscreens and their limitations over at the Coos website to check out. In this pose photo, he looks drastically different. The photo quality is grainier, likely added in post-production because this isn't 1990 anymore, which reduces the appearance of skin blemishes. Also, the photo has a clear retro filter on it, judging by the off-color black of his jacket and the red of the background. This would likely be a color lookup table in Photoshop, which individually changes color values to whatever you'd like, rather than a basic Instagram filter, which just changes everything to a few shades of darker or lighter. That would be my guess for his tanned skin tone here. Lo and behold, there is the original Shutterstock image, and this one is from his Project Zero profile page. Even in this, he's still very handsome, but the skin color is overexposed and shiny, which is more of the editor's fault than his. Lastly, in virtually all of his candid photos, on the red carpet at least, he doesn't have hollow cheeks, so he's very clearly posing here by sucking it in slightly, clenching his jaw and resting his tongue on the roof of his mouth, which is a common technique to get the blue steel look in modeling. Something fewer people would notice is how he deliberately keeps his head level and creates space with his body, because that accentuates his jaw width more. Had he not done this, his jaw would blend in with his neck and we wouldn't be able to demarcate where it begins to fully appreciate it. All of these are small things that he and most models do to look otherworldly attractive. One thing that I noticed about him in making this video is that his transverse proportions are not ideal, as is common with people with very wide faces at the outer fifths. It's rare for the eyes to be too close together, but it is common for the eyes to be too far from the facial boundary, especially when the face in question has a lot of extra mass pushing it outwards further in the form of zygomatic projection. Jordan's very high set cheekbones add a lot more extra width to his mid face, which furthers his facial width to height ratio in appearing more aggressive. Using Paul et al's method of measuring cheekbone prominence, his most prominent part is very far outwards laterally from his eyes, which is still desirable because for most people, the cheekbones project forwards rather than out. This projection, again, helps to define his OG curve, which is a sign of youth. Another striking feature on Jordan are his eyebrows. Thick eyebrows are a sign of virility and for someone who's naturally pale, blonde and blue-eyed, 
Having dark eyebrows is a striking feature that goes against the norm which modeling seems to love. A better example would be Cara Delevingne. Also, his eyebrows are strongly extended past the Alla to Canthus line, whereas for most people that I've seen, it barely touches it or thinly tapers off. This is one of the guidelines created by Yalsin Kaya et al. 2014, but there are numerous studies on ideal eyebrow proportions to cover in a future video. According to Mogilski and Welling 2018, 1000 participants rated faces with thicker, well-kept eyebrows as more attractive. In fact, I quote, both eyebrow thickness and jawbone prominence were more important than cheekbone prominence and eye size when ranking faces for attractiveness. This is unsurprising as eyebrow thickness is a sign of circulating testosterone and desirable grooming qualities. The study also noted that eyebrow thickness, face height, and jawbone prominence were the more important factors in attractiveness, all of which are things that Jordan's face excels in. While there are a number of proportion tests that we could cover, that would be beating a dead horse. His face is very proportionate and close to the ideal masculine shape for modern men. It has a strong mix of feminine and masculine features and isn't overly to one side or the other, which is what makes androgynous faces such as his so unique to look at. Instead, the bigger change to his appearance over the years has been his skin tone. When Jordan started off, he was very pasty and pale, looking like 2012 Justin Bieber in the Boyfriend music video. Nowadays, a portion of his time is spent tanning to maintain the look. It's part of playing up his persona as a laid-back Australian surfer on the international market, and quite honestly, being tanned does make a difference in his shoots when it's done correctly. In fact, his editors go far to play up this role as much as possible trying to mimic the flushness caused by the hot sun or erythema, the fair blonde locks turning darker with greater eumelanin production, and skin graininess which is a sign of actual sun damage. However, when done incorrectly, it can look incredibly sunburned as his skin fights back. It's important to identify the ways the modeling industry can make models look better through posture, posing, and editing while also recognizing that it takes a certain level of bone structure and proportion to make it in such a cutthroat industry.